So you read the title of this video, Should You Wait For Girls To Choose You? I agree. I really think that they should. But when I think of that term, waiting for girls to choose you, I think about it at a grand scale. If we put 10 men, put them in a room, would they land the girl they wanted if they had to wait for her to choose him? I say no. <laughs> I say no. So that's why I always push back a bit, where if you want to get to a point where the girls are choosing you, it's going to take some so I'm going to say years of self-improvement. Now, I'm going to say an assumption about Austin real quick before he even introduces himself. Austin, if you saw him at 18 years old, okay, you know, handsome guy, but you know, nothing too crazy. But then you see him now, it's like, whoa. So it's like, it took, what, five, six, seven years yeah. of constantly looking at yourself. Like, I can improve that. Okay, I can improve this hair. I can get lean. It's, it, it was constant in a way, what I call positive narcissism. <laughs> like... Constantly looking at yourself, I can improve. I can get a better outfit. I can get better shoes. I can try a different hairstyle. Most dudes will never do that. But why not? I say why not because men are lazy. For example, I'm, I'm legit going to make a, a video on this after this video. I made a video. You know how we're at that restaurant taking pictures, picture, pictures, right? Yeah. I made a video breaking down how to do that. People said too much effort. Men really do this much to get take photos. But it's also a lot of... It's a lot of effort not improving at the same time, too. True. So what's the vice versa? You increase your uh, charisma and confidence. Yep. You approach a lot of women. That's even more effort. True. Like, <laughs> so like either way, it's, it's a lot of effort. So the guys who are saying it's too much effort to self-improve are the guys who either don't care or wouldn't get results either way. That's True. the way I look at it. So you pick, pick your degree of effort right. and then pick the one that falls more in line with the things that you have strengths for and the... Your sort of strategy, which we're going to talk about, our yeah. dating strategies, your dating strategy falls in line with your lifestyle, your um, personality, and what you personally want to accomplish. And that's why I conceived my personal dating strategy of allowing the woman to choose me because I tried the other way and it just led to more so increasing frustration and time wasted, but we can get into that. So I'm sorry, Austin didn't even, and I can't speak, Austin didn't even introduce himself. So Austin, go ahead and introduce some people who don't know. Yeah, so everybody, my name is Austin Dunham. Uh, you guys have probably seen my face somewhere on the internet somewhere. over the past 10 years. I uh, started off first doing calisthenics content, teaching how to get strong with your body weight because my goal is to maximize my strength and overall uh, my looks in terms of fitness. And so I mastered that area of my life. Uh, my next challenge was mastering the art of women and dating. Um, and so mastered that and then I started talking about that. And you know, now I talk about fashion, uh, fitness, dating, topics related to um, you know, getting women more so to choose you as Chad talked about. Mm -hmm. and I've been doing that for a few years now. Beautiful. So today's video, the topic is should you wait for girls to choose you? Like I said, the answer is yes, right? But when I think about it on a grand scale, cause see I teach this to people, I teach it. And I think for most men, if they waited, they won't get anything. <laughs> so my whole thing is this, we're gonna talk about pros of my dating style and cons of it and pros of his dating style and the cons of it. So I'll go first with my first pro. For me personally, I, I'm, I'm gonna do this like a, from a subjective standpoint where it's personal. I have a big ego. I think Austin can confirm. Some of the girls I've not, I've said, ah, I don't really like her. I don't really find her attractive. She's like, what? He's like, why? Right? So I guess my ego wants to look at a girl and go, yes, that's probably the best I can do. Right? Yeah. So that's my ego. Right? So when girls like yesterday approach us and approach, you know, uh, me and Austin, I'm like, okay, you girls are cute. You're a four or a five. You're just, you're just that average. But I'm looking around at girls that make, that make me do this. Oh, shit. So I feel personally like I'd be settling if I were to go with this girl in front of me who's twirling her hair and looking up at me and like looking away, looking back when there's girls walking around who are badder than what I see. So that's the first thing about me, about I like about my dating strategy, my ego gets stroked. What is your, I guess, confliction or even, ah, I get it. Like what's your thing with that? Yeah, so, so how do you identify your ego? Like what do you mean? Yeah. Like, is it that you see yourself with somebody who, like, what do you mean your, your ego? Like, what yeah. does ego uh, mean for you? Got you. So when I say my ego is 
ever since I was a kid, right, I never had access to the prettiest girls at school. I'd, I'd shoot my shot at them, I tried talking to them, but the second I hit them with the, we should hang out sometime, it was like, eight hours later, oh, I just saw this, like, ah, oh, I'm so sorry, yada, yada, yada. So now the fact that I can play up there with the most attractive girls, and I've done it, I have done it. It's like, okay, I belong here now, and since I've been talking to the to these types of girls in my life, and they're you know we're yeah. having relationships and we're having you know doing the nasty and stuff like that, my ego is saying yes, you belong here now, gotcha. right? So okay. now if I were to go back to girls who yes choose me, but my uh, I, I was out with a girl who was ten times better, better than you last week. Yeah, my ego is like, bro, you're settling. Don't do that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, from that perspective, like it's really not really black and white like oh yeah. you know you can do you can actually do both but True. i do understand dealing with women who you're highly physically attracted to mm -hmm. and some in some cases if you're waiting for the girls to choose you that you're not always going to be like the most excited about them from a, a physically attractive standpoint Facts. but um with me at least i i'm really results driven like yeah. i'm very practical logical so yes i can satisfy my ego in certain ways, and I have been with very attractive women who you chose me, or the woman who I had to get to. But my thing is, what works on the most consistent basis? Like, do I really want to waste my time chasing after this girl, or would I go down a few points for a girl who's going to give me the world and do everything I want towards me? That's the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you do have an ego like Chad, it, like I said, it comes down to your personality. You're going to fall more in line. Uh, with that with that personal dating strategy me myself i do have an ego but my ego is more so based around why don't you like me it's not it's not that i have to be with the absolute baddest of the the baddest you know mm, absolutely but um a lot of that could be because you're your conditioning too mm. um you know living in la there's plenty of attractive women to go around also so your lo location plays a factor that does <laughs> but also like um what you engage with on social media if you're if you've been like constantly just seeing very attractive women. Uh, I'm not saying you do this, but a lot of guys will sort of tell themselves like, this is what I deserve. But you know, I, I see through all the fakeness though. Like a lot of those IG models and really attractive girls, like if you remove layers from them, like they're actually just cute. They're more so just enhanced. They have lip fillers, surgeries, makeup, take the perfect angle picture, hair done. You know, and sometimes the difference between those cute girls who chose you and the really bad attractive ones is that the really bad attractive ones have more money to get surgery, have sugar daddies, and just overall put more effort into their looks, so. Absolutely. So what is a, a pro from your dating strategy that you like? Yeah, so my dating strategy is based around finding women who like you, which gives you the highest degree of what they call burning desire or genuine burning desire. And genuine burning desire, if it start off from the beginning, overall it leads to a happier and more fulfilling time with the woman who you're with. So me, I was asking myself, how can I get more of this genuine burden desire? Like why, do, why does this girl, I have to like double text, she flayed, then she eventually showed up, but when she got on the date, it feels like I was pulling teeth, versus this other girl, you know, she made it effortless, uh, she hit me up. Drove two hours. <laughs> yeah, like, and the clear difference there was how the interaction started. And I've done a lot of, you know, my own experimentation of seeing how this works in real time, because I trace back to the girls I had the best time with, and it always started from either them showing initial interest in me, uh, messaged me first, uh, came up to me first. Like, they showed some degree of interest through indicators of interest or whatever it may be, right? And so, so yeah, you just get the highest degree of burning genuine desire. And I, I feel like after dealing with a, a woman who actually likes you, I can't necessarily go back to the whole chasing what I want, even though they really don't like me to the fullest. I can't do it personally. Got you. So one thing I will say about Austin is he's really good at, okay, let's just, let's just go back. Let's go back a month and go figure out what was working the best. Personally, I never heard of anyone doing that until I met Austin, <laughs> right? So I'm like, wait a minute. He's, he's like, listen, like the girls you slept with, if you go backwards, how did it start? Who messaged it who first? Did, he, did she come to, was it a choosing signal? Was it a cold approach? If you were, were to look at your list, if you keep one of girls in your phone that you've been romantically into, or not, sorry, romantically been with, sorry, and you were to trace back, you may see that most of the time it was either A, right time, right place, or B, they did some of the lifting for you. 
Like yeah. they were like, hey, well, well, we can go back to your place. You know, they did some of the heavy lifting to assist the process. So that's very important. But I guess with me though, I guess I'm willing to put in effort to an extent, right? So for example, if I meet a girl at a bar or club and I'd shoot her a follow on Instagram and she doesn't follow back, well, that's done, next girl. Mm -hmm. So there's no, let's DM her, let's, let's do another DM on, on her story reply. I'm very, I'll put one foot in. You're not you're putting one foot back? All right, yeah. next. Yeah. So that's one thing is if you're gonna pursue, you have to have a, a moral and, and a code of like, yo, I'm willing to pursue, but there has to, the second she shows like this like eh, energy about it, you gotta pull out. The second pro of my dating strategy, it really optimizes you to have amazing social skills. The amount of times I've approached groups of three, four, five, six women, even dinner tables, where I approach their whole dinner table and work the room, that it takes a different level. So what that does is that translates to your dates. So if you can walk up to a group of four or five girls, oh, how do you guys know each other? You guys are coworkers. Oh, let me guess, you work at a med spa? Oh, I just know, you three, you got, if you can get to a point where you're just that socially on it, that just translates to your dates, right? Um, so I feel like with, not all guys, but let's just say a guy's main way of getting women is status. He doesn't leave the house, he just opens, opens up his DMs. I've heard girls say, yeah, I went to his house, he was sat in the corner, he was on his phone, playing video games, like he was awkward to be around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he was not a pleasure. Yes, the girl was in awe, like holy shit, this is a famous actor. But other than that, he was boring. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like when you're able to pers you know, approach women at bars and clubs, grocery stores, events, and you're able to, you know, to charm and charisma, that allows you to be more fun to be around. What's your kind of take or spin on that? Yeah, so my, I, I do agree. Like there could be some correlation between having the ability to speak to strangers, especially groups of women who you might be attracted to, mm -hmm. to how that translates to dates. But in my opinion, those are two different, two completely different types of social skills. One is like, um, and almost like a, I wanna say dance and monkey, but it's like bantering, being entertaining, uh, working the crowd, sort of like a, a stand-up comedian style, you know, if I had to relate it to something, versus one-on-one -on -one interpersonal social skills, it's completely different from approaching like a group or even a singular person. And the reason why I know that is because I've seen incongruencies between social skills where somebody might struggle to approach a woman, but they can have great one-on-one -on -one conversations with a person they know or who knows that they're attracted to them. So that's my only challenge with that. I believe there, even though there could be like a correlation, they're kind of two completely different social skills. You know, so um, for example, there's people who have great relationships and friendships with their close friends, but put them in a group setting with strangers of people they don't know, they're all of a sudden, they're quiet. They don't know how to engage a group because once again, those are two completely different social skills. They, they're used to engaging with people one-on-one, -on -one, but they're not used to engaging people that they don't know or outside of, outside of a group. Of course, it, it works, to, works best to have those both social skills uh, maximized to the fullest, but you can be good at one without necessarily having the greatest strength in the other. Oh, absolutely. So my high school friends, they're the most charismatic, outgoing people ever. But when they go to a bar, they sit at a table and talk all night. Yeah. I'm like, dog, like, look at all this ass. We're gonna sit here and have a circle jerk. But the second I approach a girl, they get up and they all run over because thank God, Chad saved the day. He approached the, the first girl of the night so we can get some action with them, yeah. right? So they're great in a one-on-one -on -one setting. They're, they're very charismatic, but like, put, tell them to go approach that chick and they're like, oh, I don't know what to say. Exactly. Right? And it's a skill, like social skills is something you have to work on. So if you if you want to get better at that skill, you have to effectively practice it. But um, you really have to want it. Like you have, a, have to have a desire to want to improve that. Like if you're a guy where you, um, I mean, your dating strategy, you would say is, is still online dating, but like in terms of the, the code approach, like you yourself, you go out almost every week, right? Yeah, he's, he's, he's once Friday and Saturday. Gotcha. So most guys, like they go out occasionally and so they don't train that social skill hard enough or long enough to fully be able to maximize it even though they're probably still getting dates from online dating or mm -hmm. from work or social groups or whatever they just don't have the fullest amount almost confidence to like approach a stranger you know so. I agree so I think with with that is it sucks because as you know from doing this you know for a while most guys pictures suck so they may get one or two matches a week 
Mm -hmm. Then they don't go out. So they're basically their dating life is in the hands of an algorithm yeah. and their pictures suck. So it's like, all right, most guys may not want to have the balls to take a photo and look good to go shopping. They don't want to approach girls. So they're just like, well, what do I do? You know what I mean? So it's like with being able to go out and be social, it allows you to kind of, you know what? I like her. She's my type. This may not go anywhere, but I'm getting better and strengthening the skill of being social. Yeah. But um, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Some guys just like, just there's no desire for it. Just yeah. to talk to a stranger. Exactly. I mean, people who are naturally charismatic, confident, and very social people, these are people who lean more extrovert in terms of their brain chemistry mm -hmm. and all that stuff. They tend to, they tend to be more rewarded from society. Like as an introvert, you're gonna be punished because people, you know, humans are social creatures. And right. I, I'm gonna do a video of that. It's like <laughs> literally the title is introverts are punished, extroverts are re rewarded. Damn. And go into like the nuances of like how your personality can affect the things you get in life. So some guys, even though they want to be social, charismatic, extroverted, I truly believe, and this might be a black pill take of mine, like you can't outwork your brain chemistry. You know, you can train yourself to be confident in the environment and force yourself to do something, but you can't train yourself to be extroverted and thrive off social energy. Like me, myself, I get the example, of course, is uh, like I can't, I can, but I don't want to. I don't want to be yapping for no reason. Like everything for me is practical, strategic. I have to do everything with purpose. Mm -hmm. So if I'm approaching somebody, it's to get a number to get an Instagram. Um, for example, I feel like you're more likely to approach a group and talk just to talk. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I agree because it's like for me, it's like we're at this event, like me and you, it's like why go to an event just as this people watch? I much rather engage with the people at this event than sit there and just. That's true, you know. that's true. <laughs> but but if, you look, if you look at everybody else in the event, it seems like that's, that's not what most people are doing. Most people go to events to, uh, to not meet people, I'm not saying this is right, but yeah. they, they stay within their groups, the circles, and they speak amongst the people that they came with. Like it's rare that it's rare that um, people go outside of their groups to purposely meet people. I feel like that's mostly guys, obviously doing it to, to mostly guys, yeah, women, right? Yeah, yeah. Girls can go out to a bar and not speak to anybody else, but they know we're going to this most popping bar in town because there's a possibility and that they might see that they somebody. might see somebody because right. if not, they would just go just turn on bad bunny and sit in the kitchen yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah but they put on the tight dresses and the, and the makeup and the bb you know the bbl just to be also i think you mentioned sometimes sometimes it's cool to be be enamored by if you walk by a group of girls and it's like uh, oh shit yeah. you know, a little, little, little validation boost yeah. nothing wrong with that yeah nothing wrong with that exactly. at all now moving on to the pros i'll yeah. talk about my next Six, pro. second pro yeah and that is, it forces you to work on yourself. Yes, much more. So yeah. as we talked about before, most guys don't want to self-improve, make themselves more attractive, whatever. But since the dating strategy is uh, not necessarily waiting, but allowing you to attract whoever you attract, at the end of the day, you are what you attract. And when it comes to dating, you might not even attract the woman on your, on your <laughs> I mean, it kind of depends. If you're in an environment where there's more attractive women, you're sure. more likely to do so. But you're going to notice like, sometimes they're not going to be full, fully be your type, especially if they're really not your type, then you're going to have to look in the mirror and be like, okay, yeah. what can I work on myself? <laughs> exactly. You know, it's not all about just talk game. And even then, I'll, I'll have this debate too, like even the guys who don't work on themselves, but they have the highest degree of confidence and social skills and charisma, yeah. I believe those guys just get friend zoned. They're able to like meet a lot of girls, but on the back end, it doesn't lead anywhere except for an Instagram follower or like being able to, they get it, you know, they, they're friends, they get invited out to stuff or whatever. Or what happens is it takes them six months to build attraction. Time, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Time and mere exposure effect, yep. the famili yep. familiarity yep. principle. Exactly, it took a while. <laughs> exactly, right. So um, with that being said, it, since it forces you to work on yourself, you know, it really forces you to just improve, which is a positive aspect overall, you know, making yourself more attractive. Um, increasing your sex appeal, even when it comes to communication, that's an aspect of it too, right? So, if, for example, if I started, if I was getting girls like easy, like high quality, attractive women before I self improve, I wouldn't have had the motivation True. to, to <laughs> exactly. like really work on my physique, work on my mm -hmm. like hairstyle, work on my image, my looks, things like that. So, so one thing we talk about already too is 
whatever starts working for somebody, that's what they think the king is, right? So for example, we'll take a guy who was broke, he moved to Miami, made money, started tricking on girls. Well, that's it. I just need the money the whole time. Like mm -hmm. that's his mating strategy. I never got girls. I got money, then I got girls. In actuality, that's just, that's, that's just what worked for him. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's a, ba a, ba a bartender who makes 40K a year getting way more ass and not spending any money. Yeah. So it's like everyone has their strategy they think is, they think that works the best because that's what worked for them from the start. Yeah, and the strategy usually falls in line with the attraction trigger yeah. in terms of uh, what women find appealing about them. So going back to a, a guy's sexual market value, looks, money, status, money, muscles, gain. Mm -hmm. um, we can add charisma and confidence in there too. Absolutely. So a guy who improves his looks and starts attracting women based on his looks, yep. Oh, looks is king. <laughs> guy who makes her money. Oh, money is king. A guy who gets famous. Oh, yeah, just just become rich and famous. Yeah, exactly. Bro. That's all you know? I do. <laughs> so, or the guy who gets uh, really good social skills and builds a social group in the city. Yeah, oh, yeah, social, social circle game, bro. Yeah. So, like anything can work, but it's based on the attraction trigger that you can leverage. Once again, going based on the things that you want to put effort into and the things that fall more in line towards your personality and environment, right? So. But I believe, once again, going back to the genu genuine desire principle, it's nothing like when a woman views you as like an A plus from a physical standpoint, bro. Absolutely. And one thing to add to Austin's point is a lot of guys don't really want to self improve. So they're only going to attract girls that are like just average. Like when I go out, I at least get one girl to walk up to me. But again, I'm like, yeah, you're cute. I'll give you a conversation because I, I, I admire your confidence. I know it took a lot of work. I'm going to give you a, a conversation. Follow you on IG if you make me, and then follow you later. <laughs> yeah. Got you. Now move on to my, uh, my third pro, which is it helps you get over the fear of rejection. So I'm not going to lie. Whenever I approach a girl, is there nerves, possible rejection? Absolutely. I just do it anyway because for a lot of people, rejection is king. I should start a business. Rejection. I should go approach that girl. Rejection. I should go maybe a, try a different job. What if I don't get accepted? Rejection is king in their life. They never do anything because of the what if. Now my mindset is i much rather get rejected than go home and go what if. I'll be honest, last night, uh, he was there. We we're sitting on the couch, two beautiful Latina girls. You know what? i much rather go up to them, say something, and get rejected than go and have them just walk right out and go, damn, bro, you're, yeah. you're, you're a pussy for that. So for me, I, I work with people, I would say, bro, your, your fear of missing out has to be greater than fear of rejection, which I've gotten a lot yeah. better at. Yeah, um, regret is almost in every case um, higher than uh, the fear of rejection. Yeah. And most guys will experience that multiple times, uh, like in the moment, for example, they have high anxiety, they don't approach the girl, but they go home thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, thinking night. about it. Like, what if, what, what if I should have? <laughs> exactly. You know, and then, oddly enough, the, my first ever long-term girlfriend of two and a half years when I was 18, I met off a cold approach at a party. What? The, what wait, what? Yeah. Oh, dude, what? Oh, damn. I, met I, I didn't know that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I, I, so, quick story. Yeah, quick story. <laughs> Side note. I would see her around campus, and I remember I was already talking to this one girl who I, I met through our uh, college Facebook group. Okay. I would go through, find the cute girls from the messages. <laughs> nice. And I ended up meeting this one girl, and we connected, hit it off, light skin, cute girl. And, um, but we were in the washroom and I remember seeing this, this Filipino chick, long, slick, straight back hair, looked like Pocahontas in the face, but I was with the other girl. I was like, oh my gosh, she looks good. And then I was like, uh, constantly see her. Then uh, probably eight months later, we were at a Damn, party. Eight months. Damn. We, were, we were at a party um, and I remember seeing her kind of like on her phone by herself. I'm like, oh shit, that's that girl. That's it. And I was literally in my head for about five minutes. <laughs> Almost you. didn't approach her, bro. And I ended up walking up to her, I was like, has anybody ever told you to like Pocahontas? And you're like, yeah, I get that lot, blah, blah, blah. And we started talking and then a few months later that led into a relationship, bro. So that that is true. Like after having that experience, and this is before I got into game. Yeah, of course. Like, 18, old Austin wasn't into this. Yeah, yet. like I definitely understand how uh, regret is a lot worse than rejection. And in a lot of cases, if you knew 
that you were not going to get rejected. Like, let's say you had a like, oh, oh damn, yeah. rejection. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're delusional in your brain. Like, this will yeah. never happen to me. No, like, on, like, not even from that perspective. Let's say you can, like, read into the future. And oh, you can, like, you knew. already know yeah. how the interaction is going to yeah. go. And yeah. you knew you weren't going to get rejected. I yeah. promise you, you approach it a, a lot more women. So it, all approach anxiety or in not approaching women really does come down to the fear of rejection or uh, not wanting to waste time through rejection. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of on me for my dating strategy too. It's not the fact that I'm afraid of rejection. It's the fact talk. that- He'll talk, he'll do it, I've seen it, he'll talk. Yeah, it's the fact that I understand that I possibly could get rejected and do I want to potentially waste that time when I could be dealing with a woman who I already know is not going to re reject me. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword right there. So do you want to give it another pro or do you want to go to your cons? Cons, yeah. Oh, okay, I, I got cons too now, yeah. All right, so the cons for me is kind of going into the same um, field is that you kind of leave things up to chance and for that reason, you might not necessarily get the things you exactly exactly want Fair. but at the same time this is where there's like a gray area yeah there is yeah. like um i don't necessarily only always wait for choosing signals or only always wait for a woman to message me first for the girls who just do it for me and yeah. i don't want a girl who does it for me exactly like it's a particular type it's a particular look like that's when i will not leave that up to chance and okay. i'll take the the risk but the, if there's anything in between that to you know yeah, then nah. it's like uh, <laughs> but I, I personally just don't have the desire or motivation. Maybe because I've been with a lot of girls. Like, if I've only been with like two girls in my life and uh, I was hungry that, that, and that, new I'll, to this, I'll offense a lot. it yeah. would be different, right? <laughs> but I'm at, I'm at a different sort of stage and phase of my life. So that's a, a, definitely a downside to mine is that you kind of leave things um, up to chance. And for that reason, you might not get exactly what you're looking for. And I think that's a fair thing to say, too, because um, I'm not sure much I can say, but I'm a, th this is not that bad. You've said, Austin, that you've been at the gym, a girl won't look at you, won't walk by you, like you don't exist. All of a sudden, she's liking you first and messaging you first on a dating app. Like, girl, like, we've been in the same space yeah. over and over and over again. Yeah. And now on a dating app, you're showing high interest. It could be like, I'm at, but again, like, like you said, what if you were just to approach her? Why would have went fine? It would have went fine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's where sometimes I, I get in my head, too, because it's almost like, um, you know, I've been in multiple instances, as Chad said, yeah. where I've been in uh, in real life scenarios with girls who I end up later hooking up with or having like some sort of relationship with, but like that connection was never made because I didn't approach her and she didn't make any choosing yeah, signals towards me. Right so how would I ever know? I would have to take that risk or chance, but I just didn't. So I left it up to chance and chance still fell yeah, back to me. Still fell. <laughs> still fell back in my way. But, um, but you know, I could have cut that time frame in True. half, you know? Absolutely. So I guess a con for me, because there's definitely cons to this lifestyle, is number one, I'll do two to speed this up. We're already yapping, I think it's like 20 something minutes already. Burnout, burnout and money time. I'll kind of bundle that. So first things, burnout. Okay, for me, I'm, I have a very resilient mindset on everything. I can post 100 videos, they could all flop, guess what, next day I'm posting some more. I'm just very resilient to where it's like I don't care, as long as I show up and do the work, the result is coming. That's my mindset. But for some guys, let's say that they go on four dates in one month, so one per week. They do the right thing, they bring flowers, they do the nice dinner, they pull the chair, oh it's so nice seeing you, I'll see you again. Next day, nothing. They're like, what the? And then they say they, that happens four times in a row without changing any strategies, it's the same thing. They'll get burned out yeah. with, so first their mindset is burned out, like is this even worth it, is dating for me? Then the, the money burnout, it's like dude, I'm, I'm 500 in the hole with these four dates and it came nothing, like not a kiss, not a leg, nothing. And then you throw in time, because some guys believe the way to keep a girl interested is by giving her more time. Makes sense, right? Makes sense, right? I have to text you good morning, text you throughout the day, text you at night because I want, I want to show you I'm interested. Yeah. So I guess the burnout of time, money, and your mindset can really hurt from um, pursuing women opposed to just waiting for women to choose you. Yeah, and burnout overall will lead to resentment. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's a fact. Yeah, resentment <laughs> towards women, towards dating as a whole, mm -hmm. towards it's definitely that sort of dating strategy. And, um, you know, leading to another con yeah. about that dating strategy is that 
you kind of a lot of cases deal with women who have interest but just not high interest. Yeah, like there's some, there's some. They're intrigued, they're interested. Maybe if the experience is right, if he takes me out on enough dates, if he uh, wears the right outfit, like you never know the variable, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Somebody. And so for that reason, like you're kind of, it's, it's more so less in your control. Like the reason why, you know, choose the skin signals or whatever is that I'm pre qualifying their high interest in me. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to see if they have high interest. I already know based on how they're acting towards me. But if you're like chasing or approaching or going after it, you could be dealing with a woman who sort of kind of likes you, who is a little intrigued by you, but it's up to you to like fully increase that attraction. You know, you can increase attraction through time, through giving her experiences through like even, even tricking some guys do, mm -hmm. you know, and I never want to position myself in a, outside of where I'm having to raise attraction. I still raise attraction on high interest because believe it or not, high interest could get even to like higher interest right? yeah. to where they're like obsessed with you. Yeah. Right. But, sure. but that gap between taking a low interest woman to like high interest, it could be like five, six dates, $500. And even then a lot of the time it might, it might get right here before it fizzles out. So, yeah. so I'll, I'll say this, what helps me counteract that is volume, abundance, <laughs> abundance, right? So for example, like when I paid for hinge right now, that's a whole side note, but when I paid for hinge three to five matches per day. So it got to a point where it's like, okay, if this date doesn't go exactly where I want to go next, there wasn't no further investment, no further explanation, just nexting them. But again, if you're a guy and you're not quite in that position, you're gonna have to have higher standards because I don't want girls, like Austin said, they show up on dates, they'll show up, they'll, be, they'll be look nice for you, they'll smile, they'll be fun to be around. Oh, it's back to my place. Oh, I don't really do that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, or like, let's say you do three dates at a nice venue, you spent $400. Hey, let's cook dinner tonight. Ooh, I don't really like cooking dinner. Could we go back out? Like you're like, girl, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. Right now, mind you, I don't deal with that because I'm seasoned in the game. But a guy out there is like, yeah, she's showing up. Yeah, she's not doing bedroom stuff, but she's showing up. That was Austin's point of like, she's kind of interested. Or there's a guy she really likes and just uses you in the middle. You yeah. know what I mean? You, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's super shitty as well. Exactly. Um, uh, what's another uh, con if you have another one? Um. If not, I have another con. Okay, I realized this with myself, I think Austin brought up earlier, the con of my dating strategy as well, it can make you a bit more antsy. And I'll explain. The thing with, the thing with me is, if we're gonna go to a pop inside of town where there's a bunch of people, I'm sorry. Sitting around just, just hey, she's bad, yeah. The song is good, yeah, bro. Just, just doing that for two, three hours is boring. I want action. If I wanted to sit around and go, yeah, bro, yeah, bro, we can sit on this couch. You know what I mean? All these girls rock around with push-up bras and BBLs and look good as hell. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to have this night be interesting. Let's be real. Women make life interesting. You know, if you go to work five days a week, no dates on the weekends, or just work and Netflix, life is kind of boring. Women add a nice spice to your life. So it, what, what my dating strategy is, since I go after the baddest one I can see or find, it makes you more antsy versus, here's the thing though, if I had 20 girls a day DMing me, I'd go out to a venue and just be like this. I don't care, like, <laughs> there's, oh, another one. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Because there's so much, so many, so much inbound attention towards me. Like if I had, if I had a, like a, what I call a male gaze TikTok account, where I'm cleaning my place in a tank top and I'm cutting up steak, my you know, veins are popping out. Oh, I'd be inbounding leads all day. Right, yeah. which would make me go, like, why potentially get rejected, or why even give my energy to a girl who may not like me when I have a phone full of girls who do, yeah. who are hitting me up. Here's the thing, it's just not general advice, because most guys aren't content creators, most guys have a photo, their Instagram looks like this, 2018 photo, 2020 photo, and so it's like most guys aren't optimized for this inbound lifestyle to where I teach guys, look, you're average everywhere, Instagram, pics, looks, physique. Yes, you can go and try running Austin's game. It may take you two, three years of self-improvement to get there. But when you get there, it's sweet. It really is sweet, because I've seen it. We walk the streets, you're handsome. We're at the gas station. Wow, bro, you have nice muscles. Like, I've seen it. 
So I know, I know that, that what, what can happen if you get to his level, but I've only seen it once. <laughs> I've only seen it once. I mean, going back to your point about being antsy when, yeah. you, when you go out, that's why, in my opinion, you have to have a, a purpose or reason of going out. If your goal is to go out to meet women, then you have to go with that objective and maybe tell yourself, I'm gonna approach ten to, two to five girls tonight or, or get 10 approaches tonight, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just go out just to go out. You know? What does that mean, go out just to go out? Like, oh, I, I get what you're saying. So, I, for example, when we went out, I'm like, okay, <clears throat> if I get one to two off, approaches off, that's great. That's, like, again, I'm just here having a good time. One to two is usually my go-to. I, do, I don't usually do four, five, six, unless my homie is on the same time. Because if he approaches four, I got to approach five to one up him. Yeah. But if I'm with a guy, it's like, hey, you know, I'm cool. Just, you know, we'll, wait, we'll wait for girls to come to us. I adapt that mindset for the most part and only do like one or two approaches. Oh, uh, yeah. okay, that's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah, man, uh, so I guess any uh, closing opinions or um, closing things to talk about? Yeah, so closing thing for me is that you gotta understand that dating is a numbers game. So obviously, if we uh, put this into analogy of uh, basketball, right? Yeah. My dating strategy allows me to optimize for a layup it's more likely to go in or to the, the least a free throw. And if you practice free throws, you can get like a, what, 80, 90%? Yeah, pretty free good. Free throw percentage. But, you know, you're still going to get more results if you shoot a thousand full court shots versus going for 10 to 50 layups, right? Yeah. It, like from a numbers percentage, you're still going to get more results doing the harder thing. And so my dating strategy isn't necessarily optimized to get, to get the most amount of women, is what I'm trying to say. It's optimized for you to work on other areas of your life, improve yourself, and then women as a, as a side benefit or a byproduct of your self-improvement. Whereas Chaz more so is optimized to like fully max out the numbers game and go after it with what you want. And depending on where you're at in your life, that uh, may be a, a better strategy for you. Like some of you guys might start off with that strategy and then come over to mine. Or some of you guys might, it might be the opposite. You start off with mine, but you realize you want hotter uh, women and more of an abundance and you want, you know, four or five dates a week, then you're going to put in more effort into shooting your shot everywhere you go, right? So it kind of depends on where your mindset is at, your age, your experience level, what you really want. But just know that mine isn't necessarily optimized to get the most amount of women and have like an extreme abundance, you know? Got you. My closing thing is this. Like I said in the very beginning, Austin's self-improvement journey has been long, okay? So if right now you're struggling, you're not sure where to go, if you're going to get down to 10, sometimes even 9% body fat, constantly changing your look and testing which one, which look is the best, grow hair out, grow hair short, waves, whatever it is, and you're willing to you know, constantly be shopping for new fits and new, new styles, see what's best for you. You're taking pictures, um, good ones for Instagram and Hinge, so you can always attract one of, you know, hot women. That's, it's gonna, it, it probably will work for you. It probably will. But most guys already think taking a photo in public is cringe. <laughs> so they're not even willing to put in like this much effort. So me and Austin took a dating approach to like, okay, if I give effort either to the dating game or just yourself or both, hopefully, you'll get a better result. So for me, my result is okay. The masses, most people are average, so I'm gonna give you the dating strategy that works best for that. If everyone is walking around with a full, head full of hair at 9% body fat, nah, bro, let the hoe choose you, what the hell? <laughs> but since most guys are just average all around, as in looks, physique, income, like, everything's average, you're better off, in my personal opinion, shooting shots opposed to waiting to see who comes up to you. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely better off in terms of shooting your shot, I definitely agree, but once again, I still have the debate where they can shoot their shot, but the results are still gonna be subpar for them until they self-improve, you know? You approach 100 women and, and three turn out to dates, and then two show up, and one goes to a second date, and she flakes on the next one. <laughs> Maybe that's a pessimistic mindset though. You know, you go out, you gotta go out there and test for yourself. Like there's so many variables at play. Like a, a lot of the stuff we talk about too is from our own experience, but a lot, a lot of theories uh, play into this too, based on our own experience and what we've seen and the guys we help. So at the end of the day, you gotta experiment and see what works best for you. 
And once again, it falls in line with your environment, your personality, and what you want to accomplish. But yeah, man, I appreciate you guys watching this video. Austin, give, let people know where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me, YouTube, Instagram, Austin Dunham. Instagram is actually based Austin Dunham. Yeah. Um, check out the content, we talk a lot about uh, social media strategies, but presentation, online dating, and um, making the ability to attract higher interest women easier for you. So check me out. Yeah, it's a good one. Peace. Peace.